on this telescope for quite some time now and I can finally do a full review on it. This is the TechnoSky AG70, a quadruplet apochromatic refractor. My name is Tim and welcome back to AstroAddict. At first let's go over the specs. This telescope is a quadruplet. There are four lenses in this system to reduce chromatic aberration and distortion to an absolute minimum. To what minimum exactly we will soon see. That was one of the most important features I tried to look out for. If you have a doublet or triplet, you might want to add an extra field flattener. In order to keep this as simple and compact as possible, I went for a quad design. This telescope has a rack and pinion focuser. Most older telescopes come with a Crayford style focuser. And if you're anything like me, you started hating these from the beginning. A Crayford focuser does slip during the night and is really not that stable. A rack and pinion focuser, much different. And this one does the job very well. The focus does not slip, it has no noticeable backlash and runs smooth across the entire distance. But I have to mention it, that was not always the case. When I got the telescope and tried it out on my desk, the focuser was completely jammed, would not move and rattled horribly if I tried. I was about to call the shop being frustrated as hell, but then I took a look inside. With some adjustments I was able to find and eliminate the problem. Definitely not a nice first look, pay some attention to that before you buy. Maybe contact your vendor to let them check if everything runs smoothly before they send it out. I just hope that it's not a known issue with the entire line, watch out for that. In the back we have a rotation ring. This helps you to find the perfect orientation and framing for your target. I plan my imaging nights in Stellarium even with image rotation. If you don't have a rotator like this, you have to loosen the screws holding the camera, rotate the camera and tighten them back, probably messing up your focus for the rest of the night. This small thing is a very nice quality of life improvement. Small minus points maybe, this particular one doesn't run very smooth. When I unlock it there are some easy to rotate edges let's say and sometimes you really need to push hard to rotate this thing. Not that precisely engineered I guess but as soon as you lock everything back down it holds its place definitely. To connect your camera there's not your typical 2 inch nose piece adapter but an M84 screwing adapter. Comes with a very handy screwing dust cap too. Another quality of life improvement. You definitely want a secure connection between the camera and the telescope. With a typical 2 inch nose piece adapter the whole thing can wiggle around a lot and the camera can have a slight tilt to it. You could fix such a problem by preparing the setup carefully, but if you have to rotate... Specs done, let's see some raw images. If I would have to rate a telescope, I'd look at the star shapes in the whole image. I'm using a micro four thirds sensor, if you use full frame, the stars in the edges will look worse. Here we are in Pixinsight. I have three images loaded and we will, as they say, pixel peep to see how the stars look in each image. At first we have, let's choose the Rosette Nebula. This is the stacked image of two nights, I think. Pretty awesome already, but we, are not, we don't care for the nebula, we care for the stars. With the stars in the center you see these slight diffraction spikes. They can help them on refractors if it gets really cold, as far as I know, which it was. Minus 15, I guess. But I've had way worse diffraction spikes on a refractor, these look pretty good. And let's go to the corner. Free of distortion? Definitely not. Look at the stars in the top right for example. If we zoom all the way out you really can't see it anymore. So this telescope claims to be, the manufacturer claims it to be free of distortion. With a micro four thirds sensor this is definitely not the case. But with the distortion to this degree I can deal with it and live with it in post-processing. Yeah, let's go maybe to a different corner and you will see that it's actually worse over here. Definitely not a nice look and as I said earlier, if you use full frame this will look worse. 
but white is really hard to get a white field refractor and as you can see these ones look a tiny bit better. It is really hard to get a white field refractor with completely free of aberrations. Those would be hella expensive. Really hella expensive. But really you can see on the bright stars in the center chromatic aberration completely gone. That's a good thing. Distortion in the edges Yes, there is still a bit, but the nebula right here catches the eye and in the, in the whole picture, in the big picture, this distortion in the edges really doesn't matter to me. Let's choose another image. And here we will see pretty much the same, who would have guessed. The night with the heart nebula was warmer. Definitely, we only have two of these diffraction spikes. The stars are very round in the center. You can definitely see stars being undersampled. With a short wide field refractor, you might want to choose the correct camera or drizzle the image up. Just for the detail, look at the detail in most of these nebulae. Pretty awesome. The stars in the corners, yes, they are what they are. And pr probably again top left, worse? Yes. But, as I said, I'm fine with that. Last image to check. The recent one. Bubble Nebula, Small Lagoon, Lobster Claw, the Star Cluster, and a Supernova. Okay, my face is not covering the Supernova, which Benny pointed out is just a Nova. Uh, but come on. We all want to call it super at some point. Look at it. It's awesome. Alright, where do we have a good star to check? Maybe this is a point I should mention. Look at the halo on this star. The halo on this star is apparently obvious. It is shifted towards the top left, because this star is in the top left corner. If this would be a doublet or triplet, this halo could have all sorts of weird colors to it. I'm glad it's on only white, but halos exist because the infrared light is behaving differently, it's going differently through glass and it can't be focused on the same spot as visible light. So to avoid halos you either need to have the best glass possible. This glass right here is synthetic lanthanum which is pretty good, but not the best. For example, FPL 53 would be a nice choice. But yeah, the halo is not that apparent and everything else catches the eye. I've, had, I've seen way worse halos in some images and the filter you have can help with the halos. But let's look at some detail. And yes, look at the stars. This one is almost perfectly shaped. So the stars in the center of this telescope look great. The corners maybe differ, they are not exactly symmetric, which is not the best thing, but it is what it is. Let's look at the star cluster. I have seen worse stars, they don't look awesome. An expert astrophotographer would definitely be not happy with this. I am happy with this. Especially because we are in the plane of the Milky Way and you can see so many stars. Alright, let's look at the detail. Look at the bubble nebula. <laughs> you can see the entire bubble in just two nights. That's so amazing. I'm still stoked about this image. <laughs> this doesn't have to do anything with the refractor. This image is just so recent, it's awesome. And the northern lagoon nebula is here. Amazing, and as you can see, there's another halo over here. But yeah, the halos are not that apparent, you can deal with them in post processing. And because of the star shapes you see right here, my final conclusion will be on a scale from 1 to 10, I give this scope a 8.5. I really love the scope, and I don't plan to replace it anytime soon. The flat field is not as flat as I would have hoped, but I'm fine with that. I would recommend it for anyone who wants to upgrade from a smaller telescope or a telephoto lens.
but not for a beginner. The price and performance can be overwhelming for a starter. Only go for this one if you have some experience and want to upgrade to something better. I do not consider myself an expert even at all. I think that an expert would be disappointed in the field curvature, since most of the more expensive cameras have bigger sensors. This refractor is a perfect companion for a star party or any bigger event. But if you want to take it out on the field, it might be a bit too heavy for any quickly set up mount. But you can quickly look that up in your mount's specs. The minus points in the 8.5 comes from my initial trouble with the focuser, the not that smooth rotator and the field curvature, which I guess you can only eliminate if the price triples. Finally, does the performance match the price? I think yes, it totally does. This little guy is compact, versatile and delivers amazing images for APS-C and Micro Four Thirds users. The price of 1.3k is for a telescope that will accompany you for a long time. But what I really love about it are all the small quality of life improvements that make this scope so easy to use, but very powerful. I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, if you have any more questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will now end this video with all the images I took with the TechnoSky AG70. And I hope that your future telescope decisions will now be easier. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.